Welcome guys to the preview for season six of the XBA. It's finally here. We're just gonna go over the rosters so you guys get a visual and you see where we are at with their overall ratings. And I'm gonna give you guys a picture heading into the regular season. We're starting here with Philly. This is an extremely deep team. I like how they're looking. They're rounding out. They got a lot of great players. Colby Dale, I think, is a rookie. I'm gonna give him a couple more minutes. We'll see how that goes. But a lot of guys rated 80 and above on this team. Adding Siakam was big. You have Siakam, Fox, Diamantacos, Rosado. So that's something to contend with in the Eastern Conference. Chili Dogs are looking pretty good here. Cincinnati, as a second-year expansion team, were able to draft McFly and Hargrove, two of the better rookies this past season. They're going to draft Ruka. He'll start. And they added Michael Porter Jr. And that's the kind of guy, Michael Porter, that could become a superstar this year. All right, Xander Pollock is one of the XPA2 guys that was able to graduate. Jin Moon, another, played XPA2 last year. So they're looking for significant contributions from those XPA2 guys. They signed Steven Adams late in free agency. Wally Kane still getting minutes. So watch out for the Chili Dogs. It could be a solid team. National Tempo, a team that I like a lot heading into this year. Duran, is, he's getting pretty old now, but... He's still a 98 overall, and they added Carl Anthony Towns at center. Sanchez and Price have been playing very well together. This should be their fourth season together, so that's a big deal for them. Uh, Trikana Podgorica, 80 overall as a rookie, so he'll come into this as the sixth man. Sobchak, the younger Sobchak, gets called up from XPA2. They add TJ Leaf, although he's on reserve, so watch out for the tempo. All right, BC Chicago adding Devin Booker. So this is, again, a very solid starting five, except maybe at center. That could be their weakest area with Rashawn Holmes. Cartwright not big enough to play the uh, five spot. Zubach, their other center options. So that could be a weakness. Losing Mitchell Robinson was big. And we'll see how they do. Adding Demetrius Edwards. Demetrius Edwards was one of the top players in XBA2. He's a 77 overall. He'll make the leap. And so will Brian Banks, finally. He gets up from Iowa. XB2. Iowa Max Chen was the draft pick. So, you know, they'll figure in more playing time as the year goes on. They'll have injuries on all year. Debating this spot here with Melvin Frazier. The CPU set him to be the starting point guard. He's put in his time in Columbus and their XB2 affiliates. So, got to give him some credit. They got three good big guys. Asher Payne's going to take over the starting role at center this year. Lon Carr can play shooting guard. He'll get a lot of minutes. Maybe start Pierre. It's tough. I mean, he's the rookie. He's a little bit better overall than Frazier. So I'm going to do that to him. Maybe give Donovan more minutes. So they got a lot of guards and a lot of minutes circulating around there. Um, I'm not sure how Columbus will compete this year. Max Swain getting the call up. They were a playoff team last year. R.J. Barrett losing him, though, was, was very big. So we'll see how they do. They were, I mean, you got Carmelo and Tony Bradley now, so maybe that's the difference. I don't know. Toronto Stags, a very young, good team as well. Van Vliet, Fultz, Rothable, Hendricks, and eight. They draft Ford, one of the best rookies, according to rating so far. Ja'Cory Jerickson made a huge leap in XBA2 last year. And then they still have Demboya Kane, A.Q. Taylor, didn't get a lot of minutes. He was their first round last year. Jared Allen and Cardoso off the bench. So this is definitely one of the deeper teams and one of the better teams around. Uh, Marshall, the draft pick, not on their starting roster. I put him in XBA2, so he'll probably be around for year seven. But he's probably not going to be able to crack the lineup there in Toronto. All right, checking out LA here, adding Kyle Kuzma as their sixth guy. Pretty good. Rolando Bishop was their starting point guard. Um, Derek White still hanging around. George Foreman, the seventh, getting called up from XBA2, along with uh, uh, Lynn Wennington was there last year. I don't know how I feel about LA. You know, they, I think they could have done a little bit better than they did last year. The Paladins adding RJ Barrett, losing Towns. So it's going to be a little bit different look. Bull Bull will take over at center. Creighton, the starting point guard this year over Dinwiddie, who is going to see a reduction of minutes. Obviously, he's getting older. 
Radish and Bridges are still pitching in there off the bench. Guys that have been loyal soldiers for the Pittsburgh Paladins. And Kai Kyoya gets the call up from Fort Wayne. So he's had a pretty good XPA2 run. He should get some minutes there. St. Louis Arrows, Buddy Mayer, Wa, Little, Randall, and Pierre. Pierre taking over at center for Mo Bamba. We check out the bench here. Hart, Sanders, Summers, Levinowskis. So pretty good shooters there. Ethan Marks getting 11 minutes per game. You got Kobe Knight, Covington, the free agent addition, and Octave Andre finally makes the big club. He'll get some minutes down the stretch as well. The Atlanta Olympians adding Chris Paul. He'll take over to be the starting point guard with Turner Sobchak, Max Boss at an 83 overall, Edward George with 76. So he should be a good point guard option there. They still have Wiggins. Add Josh Jackson, all right. Dennis Pavard, 77 overall now. He's been like three-time XBA2 player, defensive player of the year. So kudos for Dennis Pavard. Finally gets his opportunity in Atlanta. Miami Night Owls got screwed in free agency, so I have no idea how this team is going to compete. You got Larry Donaldson starting at point guard, and Hachimura is back. And this time he's getting a lot of minutes for Miami. He started in Miami. They don't have a lot of great small forward options, so he's going to have to be the starter. And you got Pirtle and Noel with Kozlov. Get Zaire Smith, Jabari Parker in the mix, Tiago Da Silva, and Nick Claxton. So I don't know what Miami is going to do. I'm pretty sure they're going to be the worst team in the league this year, but we'll see. Carolina Fly Guys with Rudd, Thibel, Burnside, Trendon Watford at Power Forward, and Laterman. So another team that's not going to do well this year. I can tell you that. Just looking at the roster. Mbassi, 27 minutes off the bench. John Wall could be trade bait. I don't know what their plan is with John Wall at this stage. Um, Logan Beck. We had another Beck get drafted. The Vancouver Vortex, Sean Leonard, Hyde, Menendez, and Bag Bagley and Nash. So that's their starting six. We're going to have P.J. Washington get a ton of minutes. Shabadoo at eight minutes. We'll see how he plays down the stretch. DJ Anthony, LaBelle, and Dillard. So this is a team with a ton of custom prospect love. And they're all getting minutes because they're all young and they all got a lot to prove and they all have some skills. So Vancouver spread the love around with the minutes, but is it going to be enough to get them into the playoff mix? They've never been to the playoffs. The only team in the XBA that's never gone. Kalen Healy is going to start at shooting guard for the Jacks. He's got a lethal three point shot. So you moved him to shooting guard. They're going to see how he does. Kendrick moving in to start at power forward. Although Robert Williams is still there as well. They still have Jokic. They were able to hold on to Jokic. So the Jacks are looking pretty good. Dax Karsten gets the call up from XBA two. Signed Duncan Robinson, signed Dwight Powell. So I don't know how the Jacks are going to fare. They haven't done too hot lately. City Slicker still keeping that core together. Ball Anthony Jones are going to lose Siakam at power forward, but they add Mitchell Robinson. And then they keep DeAndre Jordan. And they're going to call up Ngoju Chembenuke. So the first Liberian professional player in the States. So congratulations there. He is going to be a force for New York. All right, checking out the Kansas City Stampede. They lose John Morant, so it's going to be DeAndre Jones sliding in the start at shooting guard. You got Paul George sitting there at an 86. Guys aren't showing up on the screen, so I'm, I just started to go. Bones, Hartenstein, there we go. There's DeAndre Jones. But you got Morant, Jones, George, Bones, and Hartenstein. So it is a different look for Kansas City. Myron Bones, I think he could be a big-time special player at power forward, so he's getting a lot of minutes for the second-year player. Oliver Grimes getting 25 minutes there. Anik Bogu, Tayshaun, so and Gafford. So they got plenty of big guys. Cobalt Andreas going to see a bump in minutes for sure. Stevko, we'll see if he can work in a bit later. Still have Drew Holiday as well. 75 overall, though. He's slipping. He is slipping to be sure. And they had Matt Thomas in free agency. All right, new look team for the Supernovas. Got three new free agents. Conley, Alexander Walker. Cameron Ranger did not improve much. He's still a 78. They got Otto Porter, Bryant, LeBert. Theo Dawkins going to see a lot of more minutes for the Supernovas this year. Out of Chico State, he's only 24. But you see that shot. He's got an A-plus 
shooting from downtown. Keldon Johnson should be a good player for them. Although size is going to be a problem. They got a lot of guards. That's why they're going to need Lachlan Chisel to play pretty well. They're going to give the rookie those minutes there. So they're going to rebounding might still be a problem for them. All right, checking out Tampa Bay Sting. We got Aton Laterman, Kennedy Alvarez, Jimmy Butler, Nader, and Dunstan. So it's an interesting crew again. I mean, Laterman was one of the better rookies in last season as a second round pick. Malik Bishop, probably going to see some more minutes. They added CJ McCollum, um, Aiden Oliver, the rookie. They still have Draymond, Jaquan Terry Feathers. He's up with the big club. And then Tyus Knight and Ibaka rounded out for Tampa. Now the Riptide, really disappointing season last year. They were able to keep Trey Young. They drafted Sean Thompson. So he's a rookie, 82 overall. Jaron Jackson and Zagarach. So four of the same guys as usual. And they're going to add Eric Paschal. Um, AJ Alston probably getting some more minutes this year. Gary Harris, Justice Winslow, Maverick Blitz. He was all right, but they got plenty of options at guard. Ennis Cantor going to get some minutes at center. And Joe Harris and Bledsoe. So guys that are a bit older now, rounding out the riptide. All right, the Neon. They're going to have Hampton Kimberly, Kari Lyons, Tobias Harris, and Andre Drummond. So they're rolling with the same starting five that put them into the postseason last year although they do have some new faces on the bench you know they added marcus smart they're going to call up jaquel houston out of xba2 hartford ian hyven out of xba2 hartford quincy wah out of xba2 hartford so this is a team that did not have a significant bench presence last year but the fact that they have done well developing their younger talent has helped them out they added nikola miritic to round things out now, the Denver Summit, Simmons, Boss, Bridges, Rhymes, Porter, and Wiseman. So they are going to take another bite at the apple here. Very good starting five. It's a starting five that really carried them into the XBA playoffs last year. They were one of the best teams in the Western Conference, and not much has changed. They have Bo Dan, a freshman. They call up Preston Nash from Albuquerque and grab Cody Martin off the free agent heap. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. Kentucky Colliers, Bragdon, Savage, Grant, Forbes is going to have to play power forward, and then they add Joel Embiid to try to make up for the loss of Anthony Davis. He should fit in pretty nicely, but it's not going to be a 100% fit because in this game, as you guys probably remember, Anthony Davis is a little bit better than Embiid. So still pretty good bench here. Dante Green Jr. called up. Um, they still have Joyner. They got in a trade. Pluto Von Prado going to grab some minutes there as well. Kentucky could turn things around this year. Now the New Orleans Neptunes. Also a good starting five. Lillard, Leonard, and then Nance, Giles the third, And Argeta has been really, really good at point guard. Clay Thompson right now at 32 minutes. Debating on how you want to roll with that. I, they might have Clay come off the bench this year, but he's still getting starter minutes. So it, it'll maybe change things up a little bit for the Neptunes, who have not simulated very well with those three guys in the lineup at the same time. I should say four guys, because Argeta kind of pushes everybody up a notch, maybe versus where they should be. So that's how they like Detroit Power. They're going to start Dalton Jet at 19 minutes per game. Um, I like the Ingram Gobert thing. Machado Rainford, pretty good there too. They added Hardaway. So Monte Morris, Javon Rosens called up this year, getting good minutes as well. And then they still have Toppin, Cooper, and Head for their big guys. So I like how Detroit looks. I do think they will compete for a playoff spot this year. It's been a couple of years for them. Now the Montreal Gatiques, this is a hugely different team here. Blackman, Hero, Laterman, Wingate, and Bitadze. So they're a little bit weak. They're at small forward and power forward in terms of, you know, being playoff good. This is definitely not the same team that played in the XP Finals last year. So they're going to need Heath to play really well. They drafted Yun Yi. Could get significant. He could get more minutes at center. Um, we'll see how that rolls out. I mean, the shooting guards might be a little bit over leveraged there. So I think that's what I, I think that's what I did there. You know, Wingate. Uh, I don't remember if I, I think I switched them going into the season. I see. I can't, 
access it right now. So I'm going off, off of memory here. <laughs> Alaska Chill, Sikora, Porter Jr. They keep Giannis. Blake is, he's starting to slide now a little bit, but they add Mo Bamba. And that's, I think, could be a huge factor for the Chill. Theo Starkman now getting good minutes at point guard. He's going to pass Schroeder on the depth chart. And then they add to Michael Green and Omar Jaconde still hanging out there at a 75 overall, getting 13 minutes a game at center. So they got some good size on this team and they got some good length. That's what I like about Alaska. Houston Lawman. Now this is a deep team as well. Sexton, Russell, Williams, Carter Jr. and Eklund with Jamal Murray as your sixth man. That was a pretty good deal. Camden Cunningham called up from XBA 2. He's now an 80 overall. And Cunningham was, I mean, he was good enough to play in the XBA last year, but it didn't do him or the team any favors to give him, you know, five or six minutes a game. So he got a nice bump there in XBA 2 San Antonio, and now he is in Houston. Wisconsin Bandits, also a very different looking team here. Westbrook, Jamison Kendrick, Giffy, Isaac, and Boucher. With Theo Maladon and Darnell Creed called up from XB2 Iowa, 79 overall. I think the Bandits could still be very good. I don't think losing Embiid and Harden, I mean, they might lose a little bit of a step, but I think they'll compete towards the bottom of that Eastern Conference playoff range. I think they have a chance. Jacksonville Jump, Curry, Mitchell, Richardson, Markinen, and Thomas Bryant added via free agency. He's up to an 80 actually now. So. Emmanuel quickly, Saka, Jericho, Peterson, and Forbes. So I feel like the jump, we could have been drafting a little bit better but over the years, but I feel like our guys now are starting to... There's, I can see the development. You see them at 77 right now. They're starting to come into their own. Jacksonville could be dangerous. Phoenix Monsters, Murray, Halliburton, Middleton, Portis, Adebayo. So a lot of returning guys off that championship team uh, didn't... I mean, it didn't quite help them last year. But I think they'll be pretty good. But losing Booker, though, I don't know how they're going to overcome that. Um, I like the Western Conference is just tough. You know? And, you know, I see DeRozan in real life. I see him, like, absolutely going to town. But in this game, he's a 75 right now and aging. So he probably won't get a ton of minutes from Phoenix. All right, San Diego Cyclones, Scalabrini, Bettis, Tatum, Basley, and Anthony Davis. Definitely have to be one of the favorites to win it all this year. I would say when you got Tatum and Davis pairing up with guys like Bettis and St. Patrick, so guys that have you see the improvement there. You know, Bettis was, was extremely good last year, so I like the Cyclones a lot. California Dragons, guys playing a little bit out of position. Walker, Thomas, Beal, Hendricks, and Howe. So Bradley Beal out of position there at small forward. I don't know if that's going to hurt their defense, but you think this team should be a scoring machine. And I think that's what they're going for. Miles Alderson called up from the Boise Rams. Jaden Hunter up to a 78 now. They still have Joseph Jones, Julian Daniels. So a couple uh, a couple good options there at power forward. Um, you know, Jones probably the better one of that group, so he'll probably get some minutes. Coax them. Olafson not really in a spot, I think, to contribute this year, maybe next year. But we'll see how that goes. All right, San Jose Cyborg, Irving, Edwards, Zumwalt, the play small forward. That's his secondary position. Kevin Love going to have to play power forward this year. And Nikola Vucevic. They got Hiram Hensworth. I mean, could start Robinson Earl. I've never been a fan of Robinson Earl in this game for the Cyborg. Same goes for Scotty Lewis and Charles Bassey because they're much better in this game than they are in real life. So, because when we when we entered that first class, they were supposed to be up there on the draft boards. And so, I'm going to get air on Kevin Love's side. All right, Seattle Martians, Garland, Doncic, Shadaya, Collins, Porzingis, Maxi, and Leo Guerrero. And James Tashi, who, if Tashi got the minutes, would be one of the assist leaders in the XBA. Pluto Pierre, pretty good option off the bench as well for the young guy. They add Taco Fall and free agency. So watch out for the Martians. They should also be up there with San Diego and Denver, I would think, as the Western Conference favorites this year. El Paso Peppers, Cole Anthony, James Harden, Jackson Perry, Isaiah Nikos, and Jackson Hayes. Interesting team. Kobe White, also still there, along with Okoro and Ricardo Bordone. So 
El Paso is a good team, good candidate for a turnaround season. They have been, you know, they've been a fairly successful franchise in this dynasty. And they trade Harden away. They get some young players. They get some capital. And they sign Harden back. So they could still be in the mix next year. Washington Founders still looking pretty good as well. Walsh, Heald, Porus, Vine, Frazier. Wallace could have been a steal at a 79 overall. He's getting 20 minutes as a rookie. So they still have Dowd, Moore, Terrence Davis, Brandon Clark as well. James Capados at 76 overall. And Whiteside playing back up center with Charles Hemingway. So the Founders, I think you watch out for them too. Now let's take a look at the standings. Just give you my thoughts here on the teams as we scroll down. I like the Denver Summit. Uh, I got my eye on Vancouver and Nashville. I think they could turn around in a big way. I do like the Jacks and the Arrows, but if I had to settle on a team, I would probably pick the Cyclones to win the Western Conference this year. I feel like they've been close for a little while. Uh, you know, Westbrook, move. they can move on from Westbrook. I do think Houston will make the playoffs. They're too deep. Uh, Seattle Martians, I think, should probably be the number two team in the Western Conference. And I do want to see how New Orleans does this year. That fearsome foursome has not meshed very well. And the tempo as well. I like the Towns Durant duo. I think that could be very positive for the tempo. The Cyborgs could make a splash as well. Got to see if Vancouver gets in. I like Bradley Beal in California too, but it's an experiment. We got to see how those four guys play together. Malachi's out of position to a power four. And looking at the Eastern Conference here, uh, Montreal, that's a big downgrade this season for Montreal. I like Philly. I think Philly is the deepest team in the Eastern Conference. Um, I don't know what happened last year exactly. I do think they should make the postseason. I do think the Stags and City Slickers will be two of the better teams this year. Uh, Miami Night Owls got screwed. They should be the worst team in the league, in my opinion. Um, you know, we talked about Washington just recently. I do like Washington. I think Detroit's going to make the playoffs towards the back end. Uh, I do think Kentucky, that's so hard because I want to say Kentucky makes the playoffs. I want to say the Jump make the playoffs. I do think the Jump have been a sleeping giant over the last couple of seasons. I feel like we should have been doing better. Than they have, but, uh, I think Bryant, Markinen, Donovan Mitchell, like those are two, those are some big guys to build around Steph Curry. So I like them there. And the Chili Dogs, too. I want to see how the Chili Dogs do. If I had to settle on a team, I think I would pick Philly to come to come out of the Eastern Conference. So that's my prediction. I'm going to say Philly, San Diego. How about that for an XB final? Don't hold me to it, though. Um, we are going to go through this regular season. Should be pretty quick. I think, pretty sure the way I had it set up, I think I can get the regular season done in three episodes. So that's the target. Uh, we'll have like the opening day stuff. We'll have the early season stuff. We sim a huge chunk of the season. You know, you do the mid season portion along with the uh, all star games. Then you do the very end of the season, the, you know, the late mid March to April thing. Then we get in the playoffs. And you guys know the playoffs takes forever. And it is a little bit tedious watching the same teams play each other over and over again. Um, but that should go quicker too um, and then I have the season seven is is just a pure simulation so that way we can kind of see how things would have turned out with an extra year under our belts I was pushing it all the way like I got to December 30th and I was gonna play the finals for season seven but then I started like really getting sick and I'm pretty sure I had uh, coronavirus <laughs> at that time but I had the I had the mild version but like it was still like I was a little drained and my nose was running and sneezing like crazy I'm like all right I can't like I'm sorry XBA people I failed you I failed you so I um I had to call it about the afternoon of December 30th if not I was gonna just do the conference finals and the finals and uh I wasn't able to do it didn't have the wherewithal so that's kind of the roadmap, guys. We got the rest of the season. It's going to be quick. And then season seven, we did the simulation. So 
We got two more champions to crown here in the XBA. So thanks for sticking with us and peace.